Behold the duplication formula for the gamma function that I used in a previous video to calculate the derivative of, oh sorry about that, to figure out the derivatives of the gamma function at 1 by 2 and 3 by 2. So yeah, it was pretty useful over there. And you can check out the video in which I evaluated the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared times the natural log of x dx. And in the process of evaluating this integral, I had to make use of these two derivatives, which I derived using this duplication formula. And it was in that video where I actually stated that I would prove it in a future video. So this is that future video. Anyway, if you want to check out this integral, the evaluation of this integral, I've provided a link in the description. Anyway, this duplication formula proved quite useful back then, and now I'm actually going to prove it. And the proof is rather simple, but quite elegant, and it makes heavy usage of the cousin, uh, the, the cousin of the gamma function, that is the beta function. Now, uh, beta xy equals the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the x minus 1 times 1 minus t to the y minus 1 integration with respect to t. Now, notice one thing that in the duplication formula, we're not concerned with different arguments. We're concerned with a sim with a, a single complex argument, z. So we should be interested in the case where x equals y. So beta xx equals the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the x minus 1 times 1 minus t to the x minus 1 dt. And the reason we're using the beta function is because of a very useful connection to the gamma function. Oops, sorry about that. I meant uh, I wanted to get rid of this. So yeah, delete. And that relation is that uh, beta xy equals gamma x times gamma y divided by gamma x plus y. So this means that on the right hand side of uh, beta xx, we have gamma square of x divided by gamma 2x. Now from here, we can work our way towards the uh, duplication formula quite easily if we make use of a another representation, another integral representation of the beta function called the geometric representation, which can be derived quite easily, especially in this setting, using a simple trig substitution. So we let uh, t equal the square of the sine of u, which implies that dt equals twice the sine of u times the cosine of u du. So that means beta xx, and let's call this integral i, equals the integral from now for t to approach 0, u must approach 0 as well. And for t to approach 1, u should approach pi by 2, obviously. So the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of, uh, now this is the square of the sine, and you have another exponent here, x minus 1. So this is sine uh, to the 2x minus 2 of u times 1 minus the square of the sine of u, which is, of course, the the square of the cosine of u. And you have another exponent. So again, you have a cosine to the 2x minus 2 of u, and, and the differential element transforms into... Um, let's just take this constant multiple of 2 outside, and we have sine of u times the cosine of u du. And further, I would like to multiply the sine terms and the cosine terms with each other. So this implies that i equals twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of uh, sine to the 2x minus 1 of u times the cosine to the 2x minus 1 of u du. Now what you have is the geometric representation of the beta function and from here you can easily derive the duplication formula by using one simple strategy and that is that replace the product of two trig functions by a single trig function and that can be done quite easily. If you write this, if you write the integrand as sine of u times the cosine of u to the 2x minus 1. Okay, this looks familiar. And you just pop in the 2 over here, and obviously now you have to divide by 2 to the 2x minus 1. And now what you have is uh, the double angle formula for the sine function. So you have 2 to the 
Um, this is going to evaluate to, let me see, yeah, 2 minus 2x times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine of 2u uh, to the 2x minus 1 du. And we need another substitution. And the purpose of the substitution is to get back to the beta function. Yes, on the left-hand side is beta xx, right? And on the right-hand side, we want to express it as another beta function. And how exactly am I going to do that? Well, I'll use a substitution where we let 2 times u equal to phi, let's say. So this implies that du equals 1 half of d phi. And as far as the limits are concerned, you will get... Um, 0 and 2 times pi by 2 is pi, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. And you have this factor of 1 by 2 because of the differential element. So 1 by 2 outside. And wait, this is 2 to the 2x minus... Oh, 2 to the 2 minus 2x. And this is uh, 2 to the negative 1. So let's just write all of this simplified as 2 to the 1 minus 2x. Okay, that looks good. Times uh, the integral from 0 to pi of sine... Uh, of sine to the 2x minus 1 of phi d phi. Now, for the geometric representation of the beta function, we had to integrate from 0 to pi by 2. But here, this is the integral from 0 to pi. So that's a problem that can be sorted out using the properties of the definite integral. So there's a property that I have explained in the previous video, also linked in the description that if you have a function that satisfies a property of f of 2a minus x equal being equal to f of x, and in this case, you can write pi as 2 pi by 2. If this uh, condition holds, then the integral from 0 to 2a of f of x with respect to x equals twice the integral from 0 to a of f of x. And... You notice here that we have sine, uh, sine of phi. So two times pi by two, uh, pi by two is just pi. So uh, sine of pi minus x equals sine of x. We know this from elementary trigonometry. So that means our integral satisfies this criteria. So instead of integrating from zero to pi, just integrate from zero to pi by two and double the result. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable so far. And now don't multiply the the two and uh, don't multiply these two terms involving the base of two outside. Don't do that because what I want to do is just separate this term a bit. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. I have two to the one minus two x and I'm going to enclose uh, the rest in brackets, I have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 2x minus 1 of phi times the cosine of phi to the 0th power, right? There is no harm in multiplying by 1. There's no harm in it whatsoever. So that 1 turned into a cosine of phi to the 0th power, which is pretty cool. Why is it so cool? Well, what you have now is, again, a geometric the geometric representation of the beta function. And we know that the integral, twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2, sorry about that, twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 2x minus 1 of phi times the cosine to the 2y minus 1 of phi d phi. This equals the beta function evaluated at x and y. So on comparison, you do have an argument of x, but what about the y? The y value here is, uh, is, more, uh, is more specific. You have 2y minus 1 equal to 0, right? So this implies that y equals 1 half. So you have uh, the beta function of x and 1 half. Okay, so that means on the left-hand side, you had beta xx. And on the right-hand side, you have this multiple here, this constant multiple 2 to the... Uh, it's not a constant multiple. It involves the term uh, x, but wait, x is a parameter here. So yeah, it's a constant multiple anyway of uh, 2 to the 1 minus 2x, treating x as a parameter. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. You get the idea.
So you have this uh, multiple here multiplied by the beta function of x to the one half, which itself is quite a nice formula, but it gets better because when you express them in terms of the gamma function, you have, uh, we've seen this, the square of the gamma function divided by gamma 2x. This equals 2 to the 1 minus 2x times gamma x times gamma 1 by 2, our favorite factorial, that is square root pi, divided by gamma x plus 1 by 2. And all of this rings quite a few bells. So if you cancel out one of the gamma functions, then you have gamma x times gamma x plus 1 half equal to the square root of pi times 2 to the 1 minus 2x times gamma 2x, which proves the uh, duplication formula. And yes, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.